As I travel across the country, and I, I do so often, I know I notice something, and this is, this is repetition to our own people, but I notice something in the churches of America that is alarming to me, and also inconsistent, I think. I sit on a platform, and I watch the people as they come in, in churches and denominational meetings across this country. I just spoke yesterday, Friday night and Saturday, to the uh, Buffalo and Niagara Sunday School Convention, uh, 86 churches, I think, were represented. And, and uh, I speak tomorrow night in Tampa, Florida. And I, uh, I, I sit on the platform, and here's what I see. I see a fine-looking young man, I'm sorry, middle-aged man, walk in. He, he has his Bible under his arm. His hair is neatly cut, and he has a neat, shaved, a closely shaven face. And he has on a, a suit, and he looks like a fine Christian gentleman. And right behind him, there is a teenage-looking something who comes in. It, he has, I hesitate to say he has on blue jeans. They're trying to stay on. And uh, he wears blue jeans. And usually has some kind of a, of a t-shirt, maybe a smile, uh, 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 insignia or symbol on his, uh, chest. And, uh, and long, shaggy hair. And he comes in and he's usually sort of doing like this as he comes in. And, uh, and the father knows how to walk, but, but the fella, he looks like a disjointed piece of spaghetti is what he looks like. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> he comes walking in. And don't turn me off now. If you're going to turn me down, okay, but don't turn me off. I'd like to have the shot at you all the way through the message tonight. Um, it costs the same thing. It's a dollar for the sermon, whether you hear it all or part of it. And <clears throat> so, but but I notice a generation gap. Then after the after that, I see a lovely lady coming in. Usually she she's usually in her late thirties or early forties, and uh, her dress is modestly down to her knee, and she has a Bible in her arm and her purse. And right after she comes in, in walks, not exactly sure what it is. It looks a little bit like the thing that was following the man. Uh, it's a little hard to tell exactly which is which, but she comes in, and uh, and my first impression is, oh my soul, she forgot her skirt. That's my first impression. And a couple of, uh, you know, you know, one reason if I didn't believe that many skirts were wrong. Did you know that many of you ladies ought to wear a long skirt to cover your knee just as a part of the Beautify America program? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, in walks this long, gangly kind of a gal, and, uh, her, um, uh, if she bends over, you, you must look the other way. You dasn't continue looking if she bends over. And, uh, and when she sits down, it's almost embarrassing to even have her in the building. Now, here's the strange thing about it. Her mother is a modest-looking, lovely Christian lady. Her father is a, is a, is a fine-looking Christian gentleman. Now, I wonder why they couldn't transfer Christianity to their children. I wonder why that they could not, the father couldn't teach the son how to dress. And I wonder why the mother couldn't teach the daughter how to dress. Now, all across America, we have, we face the miniskirt craze. By the way, it's not only in America, it's everywhere. The shortest miniskirts that I've seen were in Israel. I don't know how they could be any shorter than here. Maybe they have longer legs in Israel. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, all over the world, we have the miniskirt craze that is gripping our country. Now I'm going to show you tonight, uh, what the, what the Bible says about the miniskirt. No, the Bible doesn't say anything. The Bible doesn't have the word miniskirt in it. The Bible doesn't say, use the word miniskirt. But the Bible does teach that it's a, sh a sin for a woman to show her thigh in public. Now, the thigh begins right above the knee, which means that anything above the knee is wrong for a woman to show in public, and I'm going to show you what the Bible says about it after a while. But there are others who've spoken about miniskirts, others besides the, 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 the writers of the Bible. For example, the law enforcers across our country and around the world has spoken about miniskirts. In the city of Toronto, Canada, for example, <clears throat> this question was asked all the policemen in the city of Toronto when I was there a few days ago. Who is more likely to be raped? A lady wearing a skirt to her knees or a female wearing a miniskirt? This question was advanced to every officer in the city of Toronto, Canada. Ninety-one the boys back here in the back saying that girl, all oh, you, you two folks, sit up. 
Put your leg to sit up. And young lady, you listen to me now. Boys, you listen to what I have to say too. you talked enough for one service. Uh, God knows our girls need what I'm going to preach tonight, and you fellows are not going to keep a girl from hearing it or the girls behind you either. And uh, so, by the way, you folks are visiting. Don't get alarmed. That's the way America used to operate years ago. There was a day when adults ran the young people. Uh, we have a, you folks are visiting, we have the strangest church you've ever seen. We have a church where the parents tell the kids what to do. Strangest thing you've ever seen in your life. Outdated, primitive, puritanic. And we have a, we have schools. And do you know that the principal holds the students hostage instead of the students holding the principal hostage in our school? If we have a riot, it's usually won by the teacher in front of the class. We have the strangest thing. In our church, the young people are supposed to sit up and listen, and the pastor tells them to. Strangest thing. I'm glad you came tonight because you need to see it like it was in America all through these years and like our, our country was, was founded. And, uh, but anyway, the, uh, uh, the Toronto law enforcement officers, 91% of them said that a girl in a miniskirt is more likely to be raped than a girl who's dressed with a skirt down to the top of the knee. Since 1964, for example, by the way, that was the year the miniskirt was introduced. Since 1964, <coughs> rapes in the United States have increased by 68%. And England, who got the miniskirt before we did, and I think is a little more radical about it, uh, the rape, uh, uh, sexual rape has increased in England by the rate of 90% since 1964. The Ontario Safety League says that miniskirts are a traffic hazard. Now you're going to be you're going to be laughing at this. They say that girls walking down the streets in miniskirts cause drivers to turn their eyes toward the girls and actually cause accidents. Like uh, uh, one fellow said one time, uh, the little boy said, "Daddy said, fellow's out working in the yard, and the little boy said, Daddy, if you're not looking at that pretty lady next door, uh, why is it you're watering the side of the house?" And uh, so uh, the Ontario Safety League says that actually. Uh, tra uh, miniskirts are traffic hazards. Sergeant G-O-U-G-H of Toronto's Morality Squad said, and I quote, abbreviated costumes are no doubt a factor in offenses against women. Officers in 50 states in America, all 50 of our states, were asked this question. Is there a correlation between crimes against women, rape and so forth, and uh, the miniskirt? Now get this. In 50 states, there was a resounding yes that came from the law officers in every state in this union when asked if crimes against women were affiliated or associated with the miniskirt. Did you know in 61 cities across this country, the 61 largest cities in the country, uh, policemen were asked this question, do miniskirts uh, incite rape and is the increase in crimes against women caused by the miniskirt? In the 61 largest cities in America, 92% of all the police officers said, yes, miniskirts cause uh, rape. Now, you say, well, you fundamentalist preachers are always talking against miniskirts. Why don't you preach, uh, talk about the policemen? They're talking against miniskirts, too. 92% of the policemen in Chicago, in New York City, in Los Angeles, in Dallas, in Atlanta, in Denver, 92% of them in 61 largest cities in America, and I think that might include Hammond, I'm not sure, in the top 61, but 92% said yes, only 8% said it had no effect on the, on the crimes against women. 83% of the policemen in these 61 cities said the most dangerous fashion in history is the short-skirted girl when she's seated. Don't laugh at me while I'm preaching on this, fellas. When I'm preaching about indecency in America, when I'm preaching about trying to get you get girls to act like ladies and so forth, you ought to be crying instead of laughing. Now, if I say something funny, you laugh at it. When I talk about a girl sit, sitting down and showing parts in the body she shouldn't show, and when I talk about uh, things like that causing rape across America and wrecking the lives of our boys and girls, don't you think that's smart and funny? It's not. It's sad and tragic. I say again, 83% of the policemen in the 61 largest cities in America said the most dangerous fashion in history is a short-skirted girl seated. J. Edgar Hoover said, the rape rise in this country is caused by the near nudity of the modern girls. The near nudity of the modern girls. 
Now that's what the law enforcers have had to say. Now before we check what the Bible has to say, let's see what other nations are saying. Did you know in many countries around the world the ministry has been outlawed? For example, in Ethiopia, a rioting for two weeks was caused by the ministry clad in Ethiopia. Fifty were injured in the rioting, one hundred vehicles destroyed, and the schools were closed for two weeks because of rioting about the ministry. A Portuguese ship recently was captured by rebel pirates. It was called the Santa Maria ship, captured by rebel pilot, pirates. And um, um, the women on the ship were dressed immodestly, dressed in miniskirts. They wore bikinis and uh, in general were dressed as the average young lady in America would dress. But now these rebel pirates took over the ship. And these young ladies got together and they said to each other, we had better cover our thighs because we'll be afraid, we'll be assaulted or attacked by these men. And for their own personal safety, these young ladies, cut, they, they refused to wear their mini, their mini skirts in public. They would not dress in bathing suits at all. Why? Because they realized that they were likely to be assaulted and attacked or raped by these rebel pirates if they wore skirts that revealed their thighs and wore garments that revealed their, their bodies and the but made them partially nude. Now you see what I'm saying? Now, now get, get the reverse of it now. If, if they put on clothes to cover their bodies to keep them from being assaulted, then if they take off that covering, I wonder if maybe they're asking for someone. You think that may be it? Um, did you know, for example, that um, in many of the countries, in the, in the missionary East, East Pakistan said, and I quote, the more primitive the nation, the shorter the skirt. The more primitive the nation, the shorter the skirt. And in at least 17 countries around the world, somebody has said, many skirts have been outlawed as being against the best interest of the nation. After a while, we're going to let the Bible speak. But let's let others speak for, for now. Law enforcers have spoken. Other nations have spoken. Hey, I don't know what let's do. Let's let the originator of many skirts speak. What do you say? Let's listen to what the originator says. Who originated? Uh, uh, a lady named, and I use the word lady very loosely tonight in many of these cases, a lady named Mary Quant, Q-U-A-N-T. And here's what she said. I quote her. Now, <laughs> women and girls <laughs> can announce that they are ready for sex in the afternoon. That's what the originator said about the miniskirt. Now, you may not be against the miniskirt, you may call me old-fashioned old fogey, old but at least I've got the word of the lady who originated the miniskirt who said that the reason she originated it was so girls could be ready for sex in the afternoon. She was asked this question, what kind of character does today wo the, 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 today's woman want to be? And Mary Quant, who, uh, who gave us the miniskirt, said, I quote, a sexual creature. She displays her sex instead of hiding it. I, I like men. I'm sexy. I enjoy life. She said, that's the miniskirt wearer. That's what the, the, the founder of it said. That uh, uh, today's girl, girl wants to be. In November 13, 1967, she said, and I quote, Many clothes are symbolic of girls who want to seduce a man. That's what the author said. I mean, that's what the founder said. Mary Quant said, mini skirt and mini clothes are for girls who want to seduce a man. Again, I quote Mary Quant, who said, and I, all the rules are gone. There is no such thing as what is in or out. I've always hated rules. Now all rules are gone. All hemlines are available. Now, ladies, you want to swallow that kind of philosophy? You want a lady that wants you to have sex in the afternoon, illicit sex in the afternoon? You want her telling you what to wear? You want something founded by a lady who says no rules at all?